Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel, and today we have a super interesting topic to go over. So the idea of skill-based matchmaking is not exactly a new one within the Call of Duty franchise. Fans have been discussing it for years now, and reverse boosting has been a thing for years as well, and everybody has been wondering why it was implemented in the first place, and why the Call of Duty developers insist on having it in every single game. Well, a few days ago, Nadeshot posted a tweet that got a lot of attention. In here, he says that he will never understand why Call of Duty goes through all the trouble of implementing skill-based matchmaking, but won't add a proper ranking system. Now, like I said, this particular tweet got a lot of attention, and it saw a lot of news coverage, but as always, the Infinity War dev team and the people over at Activision declined to comment on it, because they seem to pretend that skill-based matchmaking doesn't exist, and they try to just sweep it under the rug. Well, the other day, a former Call of Duty developer commented on the situation, Situation, and it wasn't just any developer, it was the former co-founder of Sledgehammer Games, Michael Condry. In a response to a Fisticuffs tweet, Michael explains that this is not the fault of the developers, but rather, the fault of Activision. He claims that skill-based matchmaking, monetization models, and dedicated server coverage are all controlled by Activision's central tech and production teams. He also explains that this is very frustrating from the perspective of a developer, because they have shockingly little influence over these decisions, and obviously these decisions heavily impact their games that they're creating, as well as they impact the Call of Duty community. Now, for me personally, I love that Contry opened up on this subject because the current Call of Duty developers appear to be under some sort of an NDA or something because no one who is currently on the Activision payroll have so much uttered the phrase skill-based matchmaking, let alone straight up said that Activision themselves are solely responsible for monetization models and business practices within each Call of Duty game. If you guys don't know Michael Contry's track record, he was originally a co-founder of Sledgehammer Games and he helped co-develop Modern Warfare 3, he helped make Advanced Warfare, and of course he helped make Call of Duty World War II. Halfway through the World War II life cycle, he would end up leaving Sledgehammer Games out of nowhere, which was really weird, because again, he was the co-founder of the studio, and he took up some sort of an undisclosed job within Activision, but soon after that, he would leave that job, and then start working with 2K Games within the Studio 31st Union. This is definitely a guy who knows what he's talking about. He's been on the inside of Call of Duty for a very long time. He's basically the David Vonderhaar of Sledgehammer Games, for all intents and purposes, and I think it's really interesting to learn just how little influence the Call of Duty developers have over their own games. We've been discussing the Call of Duty franchise for years here on the channel. In fact, that's pretty much all we do, and I've often had to remind people that while, yes, the developers do have some creative control over what happens within their games, the final decision still always always comes from Activision, because it's not like Infinity Ward, Treyarch, and Sledgehammer are being contracted out by Activision to make games. Activision literally owns them, and as such, every major decision either comes from them or needs to be approved by them. Now, the big question I'm sure on everybody's mind right now is why does skill-based matchmaking exist in the first place? Why do they keep ramping this up every single year? Why does Activision insist on this being a feature within each game? Well, the simple answer, like always, is money, right? It always comes down to money. If you spend any amount of time on YouTube, Twitter, or Reddit, then you'll know that the overwhelming majority of people hate the idea of skill-based matchmaking, but the sad truth is... We're not an overwhelming majority in any way, shape, or form. In actuality, we are a vocal minority. Now, obviously, we don't have exact numbers when it comes to this stuff because it would be impossible to figure those numbers out. So instead, I'll just pull some numbers out of my ass. But I would estimate that something like 10% of the overall total Call of Duty player base actually pay attention to the game enough to watch YouTube videos and live streams and browse Reddit and follow the devs as well as their favorite content creators on places like Twitter, right? The other 90% simply don't care enough about that stuff. They are the casual player base, and they are also the player base that Activision is targeting the most. I think that's been made incredibly clear with the design direction of Modern Warfare. Right from the very beginning, the developers said that the game was designed to bring in a new target audience and make the transition easy for those new players, which is why we see so many radical gameplay changes. It's why Dead Silence is not a perk, it's why the minimap doesn't work properly, it's why the maps are so dense and why there are dozens of 
have windows and doorways everywhere, and it's also why Modern Warfare is the slowest, campiest Call of Duty in franchise history. The idea was to bring in as many new players as possible with the modern setting and the recognizable characters and the gritty theme, but then keep those new players around and spending money on the in-game shop and the battle pass by making sure that their gameplay experience is as safe and as enjoyable as possible. Think about this for a second. Remember how everybody thought when the game first came out that it was really weird that we couldn't vote for maps and after each game we were thrown into an entirely separate lobby? Well, the reason behind that isn't because they don't want people trash talking in between matches or anything like that. It's because after each match, they reevaluate your quote unquote skill and then throw you into a new lobby with players of an equal skill level. If you're a new player and the system somehow failed you and you got completely wrecked in a match, then the game is going to throw you into a much easier lobby so you can get some kills and feel good about yourself because a happy player is much more likely to drop extra money on the game. Think about this for a second, it just makes so much sense, like, if you feel like a beast when you play a video game and you're putting tons and tons of time into it and you really feel like you're good at the game, you're much more likely to want to spend extra money on things like cosmetics as compared to if you were awful at that game, right? If you're getting stomped into the ground every single match, like all of us had to do at one point when we first started playing the franchise, then you're more likely to quit, right? You're more likely to quit the game, you're more likely to not spend extra money, and you're more likely to not recommend the game to your friends, and you may even be hesitant to buy the next Call of Duty when it comes out. That's the reason why skill-based matchmaking is around. It's here to give new players the illusion that they're doing well, even if they aren't really improving as players. I talked about this on my stream the other night, but one of my favorite memories of Call of Duty was actually becoming competent at it. My first Call of Duty game was COD 4, and I remember I was so bad. It was my first ever online shooter game. I got stomped every single match, and I was happy if I could somehow camp my way up to an even kill death ratio while playing team deathmatch. I was really that bad. Still though, I was smart enough and self-aware enough to realize that the reason why I wasn't doing well was because I sucked. It was not because the game was too hard or there was no way to get good at it. It was because I was bad and that was basically the end of it. I would look at the scoreboard and I would see these other players calling in helicopter after helicopter and dropping 30, 40, 50 kills in the match while I could barely pull 10 kills. And right then and there, I decided I wanted to get better at this game because I knew if I put in the time and I put in the effort, I would become a beast at that game. I started by watching my kill cams, right? I started small. I started watching every kill cam to analyze how I died. And from there, I started watching YouTube videos from the like of Hutch and Blame Truth and XCal and Beyond and Scoreboard and all the old school Call of Duty guys. And I would study their gameplay. I would watch what they would do and the class tips they would use and basically just try to learn how they were successful and try to implement that into my own play style. And then slowly over time, I would go from that guy who could barely scrap together 10 kills in a single domination match to being the guy calling in helicopter after helicopter, dropping 40, 50, 60 kills consistently while also playing the objective. The evolution of going from a clueless new player to a seasoned Call of Duty veteran was a really fun journey, and it's one of the reasons why I fell in love with the franchise. It's because I knew if I were to put in the time and the effort, I could become really good at the game. But new players these days aren't going to experience that journey, especially while playing a game like Modern Warfare with its skill-based matchmaking system. Not only is Activision annoying the hardcore player base by making lobbies as sweaty and as annoying as possible, but they're also robbing the next generation of Call of Duty players from making the transition from bad player to good player. For me personally, I am much more in favor of a skill-based team balancing system because I feel like that makes a lot more sense for the player base as a whole. If you guys haven't heard this concept, allow me to quickly try and break it down because it's actually pretty simple. Within this system, everybody connects to the lobby solely based on connection and connection alone. Once everybody is in the lobby, the game will then divide the two teams up based on skill, and skill is somehow determined from a combination of kill-death ratio, win-loss ratio, score per minute, time played, and a number of other factors. The game will basically assign every player in the lobby with a skill rating of 1 to 10, and then try to make the accumulative rating of each team as close as possible. So, for example, if your skill rating is 8 out of 10, then you're more likely to have a number of 2 or 3 skill-rated players on your team if they happen to make it into your lobby, but that's 
that's true of every other high-skilled player as well. This still means that good players are essentially going to have to carry a lot of the time, but the teams are going to be a lot more balanced, and there will be good and bad players on either side, and it's going to balance everything out in the end, right? It's a much better system than having teams be completely random, because when that happens, matches won't even attempt to be fair, and oftentimes they're going to be more luck-based than anything, with one side steamrolling the other. With a skill-based team balancing system, everyone joins a lobby based on connection, and based on who actually shows up there, the teams are going to be as balanced as possible, with good players and bad players being on both sides. I feel like that would be the best thing for the Call of Duty franchise going forward, if they're to actually continue with that system, but I don't think Activision's going to, because they're insistent on keeping the idea of skill-based matchmaking within the franchise, because it brings in way more casual players, and those casual players are oftentimes going to be spending way more money. It's a real shame, too, because like I said, those players will never truly get better at the game like they could, but then again, why would they even want to improve at the game when they're always playing against lower-skilled players? But I must say, I am really worried about Call of Duty 2020 after hearing this news, because Infinity Ward has made a lot of questionable decisions with Modern Warfare, and now I have to wonder... How many of those questionable decisions came from the Infinity Ward dev team and how many of them came straight down from Activision? If Activision is truly responsible for the current state of Modern Warfare, then that could mean some seriously bad things for Call of Duty 2020 and the Call of Duty games that are going to be coming out after that because they may be forcing the developers to try to make the games as casual friendly as possible just like we see with Modern Warfare. But right now we have no idea how that's going to play out. As always, I will do my best to keep you guys posted with as much news and as much information about this story as possible, but for right now, I'm going to wrap up today's video and pass the question off to you guys. What do you think about Michael Condry's statements, and what do you think about the current state of Modern Warfare, as well as the idea of skill-based matchmaking? Leave your thoughts and feedback down in the comments. Thank you all so much for listening, and I hope you guys all have a wonderful day.